In this video, we unbox and review the seventh generation iPod Touch. It comes with brand new features, but is it enough? Check out our full video after this brief word from our sponsor. Repairing and upgrading your Apple products is easy with iFixit's all-in-one fix kits iPhone fix kits have everything you need to replace a cracked screen or a dying battery. The kit includes a custom driver, steel bits, opening tools, and more. And Mac fix kits let you replace your MacBook Pro's battery, upgrade the RAM, or swap in an SSD. Both kits include all the parts and tools you need and are backed by an industry-leading warranty. Plus, each kit includes a free illustrated step-by-step -step repair guide to show you the way. Click the link in the description to get your all-in-one repair kit today. And special thanks to iFixit for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube. How's it going folks? Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. We have the iPod Touch 7th generation in our hands right now. So we're going to go ahead and take the wrapper off here. This is going to look very familiar to anyone who's unboxed an iPod Touch before because it is essentially the same although you do see the new ios 12 centric little sticker springboard sticker on front now the seventh generation ipod touch starts at 199 dollars for 32 gigabytes of storage there's a 128 gigabyte option and a new 256 gigabyte option that'll set you back 399 bucks all right so here's what you've been waiting for opening up the case of the seventh generation ipod touch and here's what it looks like with that ios 12 springboard sticker let's peel that sticker off thumbs up for gratuitous slow motion all right so let's get the rest of the sticker off here just pull like that and that will fully reveal the four inch display on the ipod touch all right so here's a side view but let's go ahead and get this thing out of the case so just pull up like this and remove now below that, you'll see the design by Apple and California text and just remove the little plastic piece to reveal the full contents inside. So on top, you'll see the iPod touch getting started guide, and then you'll see a lightning cable and headphones. And that's it. So let's look up close and personal. This lightning cable is just your typical USB-A to lightning cable connection. And then you have ear pods, almost said ear pods, but they're ear pods and they have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in tow. So these are wired headphones. All right. So you get the getting started guide kind of gives you some information, not that you really need it. And then, like I always say, if you're having trouble sleeping, keep that regulatory information right here next to your nightstand. You'll be good. And then finally, the beautiful Apple stickers. All right. So one of the first things that's going to pop in your head when you hold this thing for the first time is just how tiny it is especially compared to modern iPhones. The iPod Touch is available in six different colors. I chose the blue color. I thought that looked the best. What do you guys think? All right, so let's break down some of the device's features. On the rear, you have an eight megapixel camera with camera bump and you have a flash and a microphone in between the two. On top, you have your sleep wake button. On bottom, you have your speaker, lightning port and 3.5 millimeter headphone connection. On the left side, you have your two volume buttons. On the front, you have your 1.2 megapixel FaceTime camera, same camera from the last generation, and you have a physical pressable home button, along with those beautiful reflective chamfered edges on the side that give you that jewelry-like look. And that's one of the design elements that I think I miss most about modern iPhones. All right, so let's go ahead and fire up the iPod Touch and see what's new. So first and foremost, you get a faster processor and more RAM. For the first time, you get two gigabytes of RAM in an iPod Touch. Previous model had only one gigabyte of RAM. And you get a faster iPhone 7 era A10 Fusion processor. So here's the new iPod Touch next to the iPhone SE. I wanted to compare these two devices because they're obviously very similar in form factor, both of them four inch displays, although the iPod is obviously thinner. So comparing these two devices from a performance standpoint, I ran some, some metal benchmarks here. And while the iPod Touch is definitely faster in some respects, it doesn't blow away the A9 processor in the iPhone SE like you might expect. In fact, the Geekbench scores are really within striking distance of one another. And I find that interesting because I remember the A10 Fusion benchmarks on the iPhone 7 being a lot better. And as you can see here, they were. So that tells me that Apple held back a bit with the A10 Fusion inside the iPod Touch and probably for good reason, given the smaller battery inside the smaller chassis. One of the benefits of the new hardware is support for group FaceTime video calls with over 30 participants. Now with the older hardware, you could join a group FaceTime, but only as an audio participant. 
And of course that new A10 Fusion, that extra gigabyte of RAM is going to give you much better gaming performance and I did notice that none of the stutters that I used to experience with my 6th generation iPod Touch occur here on this 7th generation model. And basic things that you tend to take for granted like quickly switching between two games is so much better here on this iPod Touch because of that extra memory. The Achilles heel of prior iPod Touch models has been lack of memory and this goes a long way towards fixing that. And you're gonna need it because coming this fall, Apple Arcade launches with over a hundred new games that are playable via one single subscription. So that means you're gonna be switching between titles a lot. So you're gonna need that extra RAM. But Apple Arcade is a promising upcoming subscription service that allows you to jump between all of your iOS devices, your Mac, your Apple TV, and you can play offline, which is obviously important when traveling with the iPod Touch. And for the first time, the iPod Touch supports AR because of its A10 Fusion processor. AR requires at least an A9 processor and the last iPod Touch was an Apple A8, hence the lack of support. All right, so here is an example of an AR application. This is called Plantail. And AR, of course, stands for augmented reality. So it's not full on virtual reality where everything in your environment's different, but it augments your environment so you can see amazing stuff like this, a full on plant in a pot in 3D space. You can actually walk around this thing and see it from all its various angles. Admittedly, the four inch display on the iPod Touch is a little less than ideal for AR content, but it's cool nonetheless. And when you go to the App Store, you'll notice that there is a plethora of educational related AR applications, which sort of goes hand in hand with the iPod Touch when you remember that it's the cheapest iOS device starting at 199. But that doesn't mean that, um, that doesn't mean that there's not other types of AR apps out there. Yeah, we're just going to pretend that that didn't happen. Now, like I mentioned, there's also a new 256 gigabyte storage tier. And that means that the old iPod Classic, the 160 gigabyte version, is finally bested by an iPod with more storage. Now, I understand there will be some use cases for that amount of storage, but in my opinion, in general, you'd be pretty crazy to pay $400 for an iPod especially when you consider that virtually nothing else about these devices has been updated. For instance, the cameras, the same eight megapixel camera from the last generation with the same slow F 2.4 aperture and it's stuck at 1080p capture. Now take the iPhone SE, which it itself isn't a spring chicken, but it comes with a 12 megapixel shooter with an F 2.2 aperture that's much faster and it shoots in 4K. So. I know iPod owners aren't buying these things for the cameras, but you have to consider that a refurbished iPhone SE might prove to be a better overall value. Now, an inferior camera is one thing, but the outright lack of any sort of biometric authentication is another. Obviously, there's no face ID, but there's no touch ID either, and I feel like that is a huge missed opportunity to make this device so much better. You're going to see this screen a lot. That is if you even choose to use a passcode, whereas the three-year-old iPhone SE has Touch ID, which removes so much friction from the experience. Now I realize that there is still much demand for the iPod Touch, otherwise Apple wouldn't have even bothered updating it. The enterprise in particular, whether it be warehouses or retail operations, among others, have found a good use for the iPod Touch and no doubt they will appreciate this update. And I don't wanna be naive, I know some general consumers will appreciate this update as well. They like having a standalone music player. And I think it's an excellent first iOS device for kids, especially with smaller fingers and smaller hands. Um, you can see how much bigger the iPhone XS Max is comparatively. Um, and there are some accessibility use cases for the iPod Touch as well. Remember, this device starts at just 199, brand new. So you have to temper your expectations. However, I think there were a few missed opportunities, most notably the lack of Touch ID. This is the only new iOS device that doesn't have some sort of biometric authentication. So you have to consider this. You can get a used iPhone SE that isn't that much slower than this iPod Touch. And in my opinion, it makes for a better device with a better camera and most importantly, Touch ID. But if you're specifically looking for a standalone music player or a standalone portable gaming console, gaming device, this upcoming Apple Arcade subscription service could, if it's any good, and obviously the 
jury is still out on that one, but if Apple's gaming service turns out to be a hit, this new iPod Touch is a good way to get in the game. It's the most portable iOS device that Apple makes, it's relatively cheap, it has enough RAM finally, and it has an ample amount of processing power. But if you're just looking for a small, portable, general purpose iOS device, I think you should strongly consider a used iPhone SE instead. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac. Special thanks to iFixit, creator of the iPhone Fix Kits and MacBook Pro Fix Kits for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube. Head over to iFixit using the link in the description and get your all-in-one repair kit today.